spread across six acres, this campus will house two data center buildings, each with a capacity of an IT load of 17.4 megawatt. That's capacity of almost 35 megawatt of IT load for the entire campus. All available to support wholesale, retail, and hyperscale hosting needs. Today, we take a closer look at Chennai 2A. The structure stands at a ground plus eight story and terrace for a super built up area of 3 lakh 30 thousand square feet. The external facade is fitted with thermal panels made with precast cast concrete, reinforced with glass fiber. That provides thermal, weather resistance, acoustic, and fire resistant properties to the data center building. Security underlines everything we do at this campus, and it starts with a secure perimeter wall and a K4 crash rated entry and exit gates. Access to the facility is categorized as either pedestrian, passenger vehicles, or freight vehicles, with the separate gates marked for the same. Vehicles are scanned using three types of cameras, UBS, under vehicle security camera, a driver space, and vehicle plate camera. As visitors arrive, they must check in with our facility staff and carry a valid government photo ID for identification. Every visitor goes through a two-step security check, a baggage scan and metal detector. Physical checking may be needed only if the metal detector fails. Now to the reception area. Where we are granted an access card to move around in DC. By escorted by an NGT employee. Let's step inside the data center. Now we are on the ground floor. The finished ground floor level is at 300 mm above the campus hall and 1500 mm above the external hall. And this is true for all the buildings within the campus. This has been designed based on the outcome of the flood risk assessment study. At this level, we have the main entrance lobby, passenger lift area, BMS room, CCTV room, electrical room, customer seating area, and material entry and exit. There are no server halls on this floor. This ensures maximum threshold of safety for your servers. Let's start with the passenger lobby and lift area. Then we have three client meeting rooms, a waiting area, and lift lobby for interfloor access. Now we are at the PMS room. Here we monitor the electrical systems, racks, PDUs, UPS, LT, and HT panels. We also monitor the mechanical systems by chiller, precision air handling units, pumps, as well as fuel management system and servo hall parameters. This is our CCTV and security room. The team monitors feeds from more than 1500 cameras all over the facility, including PTZ cameras on the periphery, fish eye cameras on the security desk, and fist stone cameras for the inside facility areas. Six levels of security before one can access the customer back. Um, that is landing in this, um, that will be landing in this data center um, uh, today. And um, I will, what I will do is, the way we've structured this is, I will give you an overview of entities, global data center, submarine cable, and overall entity across the world. And then Shaker, uh, our CEO and MD, will take you through um, you know, the India-specific uh, details about this data center, about the MIST cable, and all our capacity across the country. So, um, uh, I think most of you know NTT, but uh, just, uh, you know, I've, I've divided this into entity limited, entity data, and entity group. So, the India data, cent data centers in 20 countries, and about 35,000 employees, and serving clients in about 55 countries. Now, very recently, NTT announced the merger, if you will, of Entity Limited and Entity Data as part of one holding company called Entity Data Inc. And um, this combined entity has a total revenue of $30 billion, making us one of the top 10 IT service providers. So if you look at Entity Limited, Entity Limited provided services like data center, uh, managed services, um, you know, cloud communications, um, you know, managed network services, managed cloud services, and that range and system integration services. But Entity Data also provides, in addition to some of these services, also provides application services, much like our Indian counterparts like TCS, Wipro, etc. And so the total revenue of Entity Limited and Entity Data and I'm talk, uh, is about $30 billion in revenue. And this does not include the Japanese telco revenue, which is part of the Entity Group. So Entity um, is the, just like we had BSNL and BSNL India, Entity was the local telco in Japan, serving both domestic and international requirements of data and voice. 
In fact, Docomo, uh, which was in India earlier, is, was, is part of the entity group providing mobile services. And entity, so, so there's entity limited, which is 10.4 billion, which is now part of entity data, which is 30 billion, which is part of entity group, which is overall 108 billion in revenue. So this is just to explain to you the size of the entity group. And entity uh, group has about 150 years of heritage, owned about a third by government of Japan, and over 338,000 people worldwide. And uh, uh, two interesting things of Entity Group. One, it has a $500 million venture capital fund in the valley uh, called Entity Ventures, and Entity Venture Capital. And the second is it spends about $3.6 billion every year on R&D, which includes uh, areas as cybersecurity, uh, quantum computing. Um, there's a very famous technology which is going to be uh, very popular over the next few years called ION, you know, which is passive optical uh, networking, etc. So, uh, data center footprint and capacity across the world. Um, and our data centers are secure, scalable, connected, and resilient. And we are able to, with other services that we provide through the entity group, we are able to manage workload between our data centers and cloud very seamlessly. The second part of the digital backbone is a secure global IP network. We are one of the largest global operators of submarine cable capacity, including the missed cable that is la landing in Chennai. Uh, we, we have over 190 countries where we have MPLS coverage, and we have over 75 hosted nodes for SD, SD WAN and um, you know uh, network fun uh, network function virtualization (NFV). And we have more than 200 points of presence across um, across 100 countries for a uh, global network. So, so this again makes us one and one of the largest IP backbone in the world, right? So, like a tier one IP. So, whether it comes to internet bandwidth, whether it comes to submarine cable capacity, or whether it comes to VPN services, we are amongst the top three players in the world. Uh, use or which network provider they want to use, and we also provide a flexible, automated interconnect to cloud. We are the first company in India to launch what we call a data center interconnect service, uh, which allows you to, uh, through a through software, click and connect to a cloud of their choice or to connect to another data center where their workloads are present. So this is a service that has been launched, I think, over two years back uh, in India. And we are one of the leaders in this space in India as well. And um, and also, the most important thing is that we have given it a holiday, I assume, yeah. And then, um, and uh, eat, uh, you know, Mubarak to everybody. So uh, today, uh, I would definitely encourage you to do, speak to our, uh, you know, people here who have made this company what it is, uh, what it is today. So uh, great people that uh, you know, are really driving this in India. So um, Kirti, uh, I'll, I'll just take it up from where Sharad, uh, Sharad, thanks for giving an overview, the global overview. I'll just kind of bring it down to India and, and, and talk about India itself. So uh, we have basically almost over 25 years of experience in India, working in India and uh, doing business here. And uh, you know uh, our data centers and you know the services we provide are you know proven track record of over 100 percent. The market size that we capture right now is 22 percent of a plus market in India right now for the data center um, uh, space. Uh, the leadership quadrant that is there, so we are ranked among the top in that, and uh, we are truly committed to sustainability, which is one of the key topics of today. And all the all the organizations are very keenly looking to that. And India was never taken. You know, We've never taken big strides in any company here, but the NTT is taking lead to, to take up sustainability as one of our prime goals. So renewable energy that we talked about, uh, the net zero and in our data centers are, is what we are going to truly drive in India. And uh, flexible in uh, our designs, our data centers, why we are leaders in, in this is because of our, our thought process, our designing, our customization to meet you know, uh, the customer designs and all, right? So we are very flexible in what we do. And agility, we, we, we try and deliver projects well within time, well within the customer. We understand the customer requirements and work backwards to ensure how that really contributes to the customer's business, right? And uh, you know, also we have a diverse uh, customer base in India. It's not that you know we're just working with one set of customers, but we have like uh, big hyperscalers, we have um, uh, multinational companies, uh, banking, uh, you know, industry. So it's a very strong base of you know a, a mix of huge organizations. 
And yeah, of course, you know, we are backed with a huge uh, you know, organization called NTT, which is a Japan based, which has a very good relations with India. And there is a strong commitment of this relationship getting uh, you know, stronger as we go ahead. And, and, and this brand that is there is to.